Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name's Mike. In this tutorial, I'm gonna to talk to you about using variables in less. Now, a lot of times when you're writing a less file or a CSS file, you're gonna have certain elements that are the same across your pages. So maybe you're trying to define like a theme for your website and you're using the same color a lot, or maybe you're defining like the same margins across a bunch of elements on your page. What variables allow you to do is take those values, so for example, the color or the size of the margin, and abstract them into their own sort of like named values. So you can store a key value pair, so you're basically giving a name to the value. And then whenever you wanna access that value inside of your files, you just refer to that variable name. So let me show you an example. Over here, I just have my style.less file, and over here in my browser, I just have my website. And inside of this file, I want to define a specific theme. So let's say that the header of my website is going to be colored blue. And we'll do the same for the footer of the website. And then let's also make the button on my website uh, the same color. So we'll make the background color blue. So now when I go over to my website and I refresh the page, you'll see that we have this little style, this little theme here, right? So the header's blue, the button's blue, and the footer's blue, right? It looks pretty good. Let's say that I wanted to change the color, right? So instead of having the theme be blue, I wanted to change it to red. Well, I have to go through to each one of these individual values and change the color. So I'll go here, change this to red, change that to red, and change that to red. So now the site is updated. But here's the problem. If you're dealing with a really large CSS file and you have a lot of attributes that are using the same value, so for example, all three of these attributes are always gonna have the same value because it's the same theme. And in a situation like this, it's really difficult to update those values because you have to go through to each individual attribute and change it. And this is where variables can help us. Variables will allow us to take these values and only store them in one place in our file. And then when we wanna change it, we only have to, to change it in one spot. So up here at the top of the file, I'm gonna define a variable. And you can just type the at symbol, and then you wanna type out the name of the variable that you wanna make. So in our case, we'll just call it theme hyphen color. And then a colon, and now over here, we can type the color of the theme. So we're using red, let's just type red. And then down here, I can just change these to at theme color. So instead of accessing, or instead of just putting red there, we can just put theme color. And I'll do the same over here and down here. So now when I refresh this page, you'll notice that nothing changes, right? all of these are now accessing the theme color, which is red. And if I wanted to change the theme, instead of having to go through to each one of these and change them manually, I can just change it in one spot. So let's say we wanted to change it to green. We can do that and now the entire theme will change. So that's how variables can come in handy, is when you have a bunch of attributes that are supposed to be the same across your CSS or your less file, you can abstract them into a variable. And then when you wanna change that value, it's really easy because you only have to change it in one spot. The other way that variables can be useful is they allow you to not have to go searching through your less or your CSS file. So imagine you had a less file that was like 2000 lines long and you know down there somewhere was a value that you wanted to change. Maybe we have a paragraph and we want to change the size of the paragraph. So maybe down here, you know, let's say like this is like a thousand lines deep in our file, we have this line. So it's basically just defining the margin for a paragraph, right? 10 pixels. Well, if I want to then change this value, let's say I'm up here at the top of the file, I have to go searching through this file just to find this one spot. Instead of doing that, what I could do is define a variable up here. And so we'll call this P for paragraph margin size. So this is gonna define the size of the margin. So maybe we'll make it 100. And now all I have to do is just go down here and again, replace this. So instead of 10 pixels, we'll make this P margin size. 
and that should update the margin for us. But when I wanna change this, because I used a really descriptive name up here, so this, it's a descriptive name, it tells me what it's doing. Instead of having to look through that entire CSS file or that less file in order to change that value, I can just use the name and I can say, oh, well this controls the paragraph margin size. So maybe we'll make it 10 pixels instead of 100. And now I'm able to update my entire CSS file without actually having to look through and find, you know, that individual paragraph tag, which again, could be like thousands of lines deep in your file. And so those are, you know, two scenarios where variables could come in handy. And you're definitely gonna wanna use them when you have repeated values or values that are hard to find. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.